good morning good morning good morning today i thought i would take you along for how i spend my day in the garden i normally start off with a nice strong cup of coffee and then i think about all of the things that i really do want to accomplish in the garden and because this is the butterfly season, and I spoke briefly on my video about my herb garden and how I allow the herbs, in particular the dill, to just over grow and that's because the dill is a magnet for caterpillars. They are a host plant for the caterpillars. In particular, if you can see there, I have a caterpillar hanging out on the dill. And there's another one. And from time to time, they move around. This is day I believe it's day five for them and I did see uh, the black swallowtail in the garden the other day and I believe if I'm not mistaken if that's not who um, there may be another egg that may emerge from the deal as a caterpillar uh, after which they will turn into to a chrysalis and and emerge as a I believe a black swallowtail butterfly so they will eventually eat most of this plant if not all if you see at the tip here that's already been eaten and they have been up on this corner and they've eaten that so they move around from time to time so I like to come out, check on my caterpillars first thing in the morning now that they're here. And then I think about all of the projects that I want to accomplish in the backyard. So today, it's been bothering me for a time now. I want to go down and it's early morning, but we have people out getting the uh, grass cut. Um, I wanna go down. It's been a project that I've been putting off and putting off, but I wanna go down to this area of the garden that most of the time you don't see. But I have a large larope, variegated larope that I wanna dig up and move to another area of the garden. The other week I did a video on my daisies that were growing and they stood just as tall as me and what happened was we had a storm to come through and the storm pretty much level the daisies that were here. So I pretty much cut the daisies back. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get any more blooms from the daisies this year. So I'm a little upset about that because they were a host plant for the butterflies. But as you can see, there are other plants in the garden that the butterflies can actually uh, visit. So what I'm going to do, this is another project today, is take the larope, divide it, and because this area is normally open, this area right here is normally open, I'm going to divide the larope and add maybe three 
the ropey plants there and I know it's the month of July but they are as tough as nails so what I'm going to do is come in and fertilize all of this this is the blooms that I had or the stems that I had to cut back from the daisies and I'm going to give them a good feeding just to keep the plant healthy so that's going to be my second project for the day I also have my limelight hydrangeas in the background and as you can see oh my god they are absolutely gorgeous but because they're on they are putting on such a performance look at those pinnacles aren't they gorgeous i want to come out and also feed my limelights uh, hydrangeas with some plant tone and iron tone. It's midsummer and they could also use that to keep the plants healthy. So I'm going to use some plant tone and iron tone on the plants today. Over under the I have another arbor, which used to be my secret garden. I had a friend to travel to Aruba, and she bought me a nice chime back from Aruba, which has a butterfly on it. So that's a project that I'm going to hang from the arbor that will enter into the vegetable area. Now I do have tomatoes and I also have cucumbers that are growing. I've already harvested my broccoli and I probably will get more broccoli from the smaller shoots, but instead of doing that, I'm going to pull this from the pot and start on my zucchini to get another harvest from zucchini over on this side i have cucumbers i have cucumbers down there that are growing that i need to come in and pluck and this is the vine from the cucumber i need to stake that up so those are some of the projects that I'm going to get started with in the garden today.
the beauty about digging up this larope is it rained last night and it made it so much so much easier to actually dig that area up so i'm going to divide this variegated larope and section it off for maybe four or five different plants and place it in an area that will also complement the daisies next year when they're in bloom. All right, so let's get started. Now, normally if I was going to separate or divide my LaRofi, I would cut back all of the foliage, cut all of this back and it would be easier just to see the divisions but because I need a little interest in the area that the daisies was in, I'm going to try sparingly to leave that intact. So I'm just gonna lay it on its side. And come in with the shovel and give it a nice big whack. To start the division. And so was that harsh? Larope is tough as nails. So it's not going to hurt the plant that much. And that's probably a nice chunk that I can come in and finish off with. Or this tool has a nice serrated edge. So it's a multi-purpose type of um, tool that I have. So I'll just come in and finish cutting off this area and this is one section Pull it apart. The root system is very strong. And in this division, I could probably get three plants out of it. And this section, I could actually put back in the ground uh, where I dug it up. And I think I will. All right. So that's a division for the Lobropi. Has a little weed in there that I'm gonna pull out and then place it back in the ground. Get all of that weed. Pull the weed out. So this section will go back in the ground and then I'll come in and section this in three parts to go um, under the daisies. So now let's try to divide this into three <clears throat> smaller parts. <clears throat> try to get all of the weeds out before I replant it so I won't be spending a day in the garden, <laughs> pulling weeds. Let's try to section this once again. That's a nice healthy section. 
and that's a nice healthy section so let's see if I can divide it once again I have two okay I have two healthy sections of the Larope I could probably come in with my serrated tool and divide it right here and I may lose some of the leaves but that's that's okay that I can see the division. Let's step on that with the shovel. This is a nice healthy piece. More weeds in there. I'm just going to pull that out. We don't need that. And normally uh, the Lobropi has a purple bloom that will come from the center portion of the plant. Of course, that might have been disturbed by me sectioning off or dividing the plant. Center of the plant, but that may have been disturbed by me dividing the plant at this late season, but that's okay. Uh, it will reacclimate itself. And then if I don't get a flower this year, uh, next year will be perfectly fine. So I'm going to get three plants, maybe four, out of the uh, Larope. Some people call it lily turf, and I'm quite sure it has a true botanical name, but it is tough as nails. It is drought tolerant, heat tolerant, and from time to time, it will uh, put on extra shoots, and that's the time to consider separating the plants. So I have two right here, and they look nice in size. This one is a little too big, so I think I'm gonna try to divide that also. All right. Okay, now I have three sections of the lily turf or the variegated larope that I'm going to place in this area. Now I already have drip in this area, but what I need to do is to add three emitters to this area. So let me get my tools out to add three emitters to the drip area. A few days after I did my July video, we had a storm to come through and it leveled my daisies. So instead of trying to stake my daisies up, I decided for this season that I would uh, cut them completely back. And that gave me an opportunity to do something uh, that I probably would not have given any consideration to. But I thought I would add three variegated plants in front of 
the daisies when they're in bloom. I already have the tubing here. All I need to do is add <clears throat> the emitters. So I have three emitters for this area and they are the two gallon per hour emitters. Now, considering that the LaRope doesn't really need much irrigation, I could get away with just one in this area, but for the first season, because I am transplanting them uh, in July, which is the height of the summer, I am going to add uh, drip to each area and at later on let's say next season it's getting too much water in this area because they are drought tolerant I'll come back in take out the emitters and add the goof tube to uh, cut off that area Okay, so while the plane was overhead, I just went on and added the emitters to each section. So I'm going to come in with my shovel, add a little biotone, and because I'm out of the biotone, I am going to use the um, plant tone, which also has the biotone formula. All right, so the emitters are two gallons per hour. They come on, right now I have them coming on twice a week because it is extremely warm. Uh, that's always subject to change. And cover it back up. Break this little up around it. And I'll do the same thing for the others. Okay. Now that is done, I'm going to mix my plant tone and my iron tone. Limelight hydrangeas. And they're in all of their glory. I uh, even see maybe a morning glory over there. But I have to go behind this area to get to the limelight. So I'm going to go back there and give them a midsummer feeding as well. I'm using the iron tone and the plant tone as their fertilizer for the midsummer feeding and let me go a little closer so you can see why I'm using the iron tone. These are the leaves of my limelight hydrangeas. They have a little indication that there's a little chlorosis that is going on. So I'm just going to come in and help clear up that problem. So that's what I'm going to do. And I am going to go behind the plant, so you may not see me. I have one, two, three, four, five limelights here. And I added more to the area, which you may not be able to see. Uh, 
so I will have a complete hedge across the back of this fence. It'll give me a little more privacy from my neighbors. I love my neighbors, but this will give me a little bit more privacy. So I'm gonna step behind the limelight and just give them a nice feeding, all right? Okay, so in this area, I didn't do it on on the video, but I did stake up my cucumbers. Um, there's one that's growing right there. And actually, earlier this summer, I saw these clips at the Dollar Tree, and I picked up a couple of packs. It was my first year seeing the uh, clips and I wasn't for sure how well they would work. But as you can see, I've actually placed the clip right here and it's really holding up the vine of the cucumbers. And this here is the broccoli. I just want to pull out the broccoli and start from seeds and it's just that easy. Pull out the broccoli. It's spent, I've already had some steamed broccoli this season. And I don't usually do a whole lot as far as the vegetable garden is concerned, only because it, our household is not that large. And I'll just come in and drop, I'll actually add some more compost to this area. And then I'll just drop some seeds in this container and start some zucchini. It's not too late, it's July, but my season is a little longer and I think I can get maybe not a large harvest of the zucchini, but I can uh, get some zucchini started. The tomatoes are doing absolutely wonderful. The indeterminate is doing exactly what they said they would do. I don't know how much longer or how much taller they're going to get, but there's a stick here and I just added a clip to give those tomatoes a support. I have this clip here. I'm going to come in and, okay, not on camera. Let's see if I can put the camera down and capture this. So what I'm going to do is come in and just give it a little more support and place this clip at the very tip of the plant. And pretty much that's it. The oils still have water in them. I will come out and add some fertilizer to the oils. And if you missed my video and you don't know what my oils are, let me see if I can show you. This is an oil. You add water to your oil. It keeps your pots nice and hydrated with water. And your plants usually love that, especially the tomato plants. And I probably will come out for each oil. There's another one there. You can see that the marigolds are doing their things. You see the tomatoes indeterminate. They come in various size uh, of tomatoes. I've been plucking them all. Um, the varieties that I planted this year, let's see if I can find the tag. And they're absolutely wonderful. Uh, this is the mortgage lifter. That's the mortgage lifter. So the other container I know is the early girls. They're doing absolutely wonderful too. So that's it. A day in my garden. I do need to come in and you can see that the bottom leaves are real tattered. And that's a project for another day. But I like to get out in the garden nice and early in the morning. 
this foliage here from the broccoli, I'll add to my composter. And uh, that's good for the soil for next year. So I have my squash seeds in the ground. I will have to come back and put a label in it so I don't forget exactly what it is. Uh, that's going to be a late harvest. Picked up a weed on my way. All right, so all of that is done. Now, what I'm going to do is take a walk over to my lime rickies and I'm going to give them their mid summer feeding as well so again I'm going to mix the iron tone as well as the plant tone to do their midsummer feeding and the plants look really good, but it's just the prevention to keep the plants nice and healthy. Okay, so that took me maybe an hour in the garden and I've accomplished maybe four or five things. I'll go back and count and see. If you like my video, please like, share, and subscribe, and as always, happy gardening.